What's up, everybody? A lot went down when it came to conference talk this weekend. If you blinked, you missed a new school, probably is in a different conference, right? We have a lot of good things to talk about with the ACC. Could there be rumors around some teams making an exit? I don't know. The big wigs are all talking. Everyone's buzzing. And we're going to bring Kenton Gibbs in for the conversation. He's a Midwesterner. What's so good about the Big Ten anyway? Why does anyone want to join? Let's talk about it on today's show. <laughs> On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. We hope you had a great and safe 4th of July. If you celebrate Independence Day of America, we hope that you did it safely. All the fireworks, we hope you put it in reverse Terry, okay? And there's been a lot going on in terms of fireworks. I hope we have no broken arms, broken limbs, none of that. More probably than that, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. We thank our friends from LinkedIn for always giving us an opportunity to not only apply for great jobs, but also keep us updated on the college football landscape. A lot to go over in the college football landscape. As we know, realignment is the new buzzword when it comes to off-season conversations, but there are some real-life deals happening when it comes to Football, but as you know, much people don't know, there are other sports universities, but I digress. That's a whole different topic for another day. Kenton Gibbs of Locked on Wolfpack is here to join us to talk a little bit about the Big Ten, some new rumors about some of the schools that are currently in that bad boy are looking to join there. And then what would that mean for the ACC? Are we a conference on the demise? Let's have that conversation. Kenton, thank you so much for joining the show. I'm glad to be here. And, and let me just start off by saying this. I said this on my podcast last night. I'm going to say it here. Um, as well. Anybody who tells you they know what's going to happen, they know where the dominoes are going to fall, is a liar. They're lying to you. I have reached out to to every source. I have turned over every stone uh, from up in deep in, in Big Ten uh, territory all the way down on through the SEC. I don't got too many connects out on the West Coast, but I reached out to the few folks I know out there as well. Anybody who tells you they know exactly who's going where is a liar. Because let me tell you this, who who knew about um, USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten? What rumblings did you hear Very about that few. before it happened? And my friends who work at the Big Ten said that they found out like the public found out. So that's how and that, <laughs> information and that, is getting released at this point. And that's my point exactly. These conferences are playing it so t close to the vest. That anybody telling you, I I am promising you, hand to God, I'm telling you right now, I have looked, I've put in the calls, done the legwork. Anybody who tells you they know, they know, I they're not, they're lying to you. They're lying. Okay. So now, now that we've gotten that out the way, um, sure. this is this is a crazy situation. I mean, yeah. when you think about teams that are now in the same conference, you're looking at USC and UCLA being in the same conference as Rutgers. Those two distances are as close to each other as Rutgers is to, I want to say the Iceland or Finland or something like that. Is, that is how far those two places are. And so- Can you you're, imagine you're, having a football game? Like if you went to Rutgers and having to go play USC, the travel time that you're going to lose from having to go there, have to play the game. And it's not a bowl game. And it's not a bowl game. So we you, you got to do that. Exactly. <laughs> you got to do that. And then you got to- Come back and get ready for Iowa next week. What? This and you is hope and you hope that is Iowa. Like I have they put in place the stipulations that you're gonna for definite play a USC and then not have to play a UCLA the following week, or maybe you guys stay out there for a week long and have virtual class. Like there's so many what ifs going on. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's again, this is a this is a wild world that we have not seen before. This is unprecedented for any of our lifetime. This is unprecedented. Anybody say again, anybody saying, oh, I've seen this before and this is how this story ends. They're like, now we can all give our opinion on what sure. we believe. Sure. And I believe that this does not end in multiple separate conferences right away. I think it more so moves to a consolidation of all the football programs and all the revenue generating sports, maybe men's basketball in there as well, banding together to say, all right, we're going to do away with the NCAA as far as like regulating us in certain ways. I see that 
as being a potential end game here um, because it is objectively, I think that at this point we can now drop the veil of like, oh, it's for student athlete welfare. I think we could drop the veil of that. I don't think we have. I truly don't think we have because if you look at every statement and to catch anyone up who didn't hear the insight, USC, University of Southern California and UCLA have joined the Big Ten for what, 2024? And so you have teams that are not even remotely near each other deciding that they're going to be in the same conference. And what that means and implications for the Pac-12 is very daunting as now they go from 12 to 10 schools. And those 10 schools can't necessarily financially compete with the Big Tens or the SECs of the world. And it just leaves a lot of unanswered questions. But every statement you read from um, every commissioner or whether it's every athletic director or uh, university president, it's about in the best interest. We always want to keep growing and glowing and building the brands of our universities and blah, 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 and making sure there's ample opportunity for our athletes and putting them on the biggest stages. Boom, let's get them to the SEC. Boom, let's get them to the Big Ten. That's what they're saying. Okay. So if I fill up with milk and I drop <laughs> it on you as you walk by my balcony, let's say I live on the fourth floor of my apartment, and I drop it on you as you walk by and I tell you it's raining. Does that make it true? Does that make it rain? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I would love it if someone made it rain on me. But anyway, I no, made it rain true. whole milk. Ew, gross. <laughs> but more <laughs> made it rain money, made it rain big bucks. I'm just having a moment. Sorry. But that's the first of all, milk is disgusting. I'm lactose intolerant. Anyway, My point I think exactly. I think you do bring up a good point. However, at some point, when are we going to see the ramifications of these decisions? Right. Like but, will we get into 2024 and these and these student athletes are dog tired. So you saw your buddy over here talking about they want snacks. Can you only imagine what they're talking about for team travel going into this um, upcoming seasons? I'm going to tell you this. I I am telling you this with no ifs, ands or buts about it. OK, there is I, I'm already seeing the, the idea of, again, the, the commissioners can say whatever they want. The athletic directors can say whatever they want. This is a money grab. It's not about how storied the Big Ten is or is not. That but it's doesn't only a, matter. It's only a money grab from a TV standpoint. I think, to me, that's the big asterisk. From a college football playoffs, from I don't think necessarily me, USC, playing Rutgers, what does that do for my brand? Well, but it's not just USC playing Rutgers. It's USC playing Michigan. It's USC playing Ohio State. It's USC, you know what I mean? Like, but whoever, like, why? But why would you even do that, knowing how limited the spots are for college football playoffs? Why would you do that and just go to a place where you might not even be in, like even more further not considered in the conversation? Well, well, let's talk about it like this, okay? Because I've got a piece of paper in front of me where I, I did again. When I tell you I've done the leg work on this thing, I've done more research into this topic than I have for for. Anything else that we've talked about for the most part quite some time, okay? Sure. Now, of all the teams, all the five teams that are big in the conference realignment right, right now, right? Mm -hmm. Texas A&M going from Big 12 to um, to the SEC. SEC. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Texas and Oklahoma, same move, Big 12, SEC. USC and UCLA. Of all those teams, only 40% have won a conference championship in the last – 10 years right only two so only two. by saying that the conference is what competitive or saying that it's like you're leaving to go somewhere and it's not going to be much better for you big it's dog. what i'm saying is the the winning aspect does not matter when you so talk about, about college, when you talk about college football playoff when's the last time ucla was in consideration for a college football playoff or, or we could talk about, well, hey, basketball is revenue generating. Sure, to some degree, nowhere near the same level as football. That's just a fact. That's not my feeling saying that. Those are the facts. Those are what the numbers bear out, even out of basketball blue blood like UCLA. Well, I mean, but you also have to consider that football is on TV longer. You have more fans in stadiums as opposed to arenas. There's a lot of factors that, you know, make that a more a bigger gener revenue generating, you know, event. Again, I, I, I hear you. I'm with you. I feel where you're going. This is about the greenbacks. <laughs> I am telling you, I am telling as sure as the sun rises on the East and sets on the West, everybody likes to give every message in the world other than this is what's most financially lucrative. 
because we live in a world now where people are uh, more keenly aware of the business aspects of things than we have ever been. And with that awareness of the financial aspect comes a deeper examination of the financial aspect. And with that deeper examination comes a lot of people saying, well, what are you doing? What are you, why are we doing this? Why are you putting others in a disadvantaged position? You're doing it to line your own pockets. And people don't want to be honest about that. People don't want to be honest about this move puts 10 million more dollars a year in the university. And that's why I'm doing it. I don't care. What Great you thought. That's why hold that right there because I have a follow up question to what you're bringing up right here. Just ho hold that thought one second. As the sun Where's comes it? out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn jobs make it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. Create a job and post in minutes on LinkedIn to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on to post your job for free. Terms and conditions to apply. So we're rocking and rolling here with Kenton Gibbs of Locked On Wolfpack. He hosts the team. He hosts the show that covers NC State and all of their athletic goodness. And of course, you mentioned the ramifications and all the chips that fall from wanting to have a lucrative decision, and that is joining a new conference. Now, to me, the ramifications of you joining a new conference for football sake, cool, do what you do. But the ACC missing out on the opportunity to be a part of something bigger is where I'm starting to have a little head scratch. There was an article that came out by Dan Wetzel for Yahoo Sports saying how pretty much ACC and Pac-12 missed the boat in terms of having this college expansion, voted no, and now they almost cannot guarantee their teams having a place, a right, well, to me, a rightful place in the college football playoff conversation. And now it's just like it's a numbers game of not if somebody's going to leave your conference, but when they'll leave your conference. There's a lot with, of course, the ACC and their, you know, right, grand right, whatever the word is, the rights and their TV deals and having to pay a lot of money to get out of that. But at this point, we all just floating 50 million, 80 million, 100 million, all these dollar signs around as if it's just like, you know, petty cash to in order to get in and out of deals. And it's looking like, you know, the Clemsons, the FSUs and the Miamis of the world may chomp on the bit. I even heard North Carolina, which I'm quite confused because I don't see why you would ever want to leave the ACC if you're in North Carolina. But Miami and Clemson and Florida State, you made me convince me otherwise because Clemson football is everything. So you know, whatever. Miami, the brand. Florida State, not sure why you would leave either right now. Maybe down the line, maybe when you get a new coach, but not right now. Yes, Kenton, please. Real quick, can I say something real quick? I just, please. you know, it's, it's so interesting to me that they called me crazy. They called me a madman when I said the playoff needs to be expanded because there are too many teams that are getting left behind there are too many folks that have rightfully earned their way in that can't get in because there's this big name thing going on. And everybody in ACC land tells me, well, Kenton, you're just saying that because you went to little old NC State. Da, 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 da. And I said, you idiots don't get it. If a <laughs> undefeated, if NC State were to go undefeated, guess where they'd end up? In the playoffs, the undefeated Power 5 team. There has not been a single undefeated Power 5 team to miss the the uh, college football playoff yet. But why I did say that was, number one, the group of five deserves an opportunity too. And number two, I foresaw, although I did not foresee college um, realignment in conferences moving this quickly, I foresaw a world where everybody deemed one conference bad enough to where they were like, who cares if their champion is undefeated? This two-loss team from over here belongs to be in because their two losses are to these other two teams who their only losses are one team lost to the other team who everybody knows is the best team in the world. So those three teams from that conference is getting in, one team from another conference, and everybody else gets washed out. And now look, with conference realignment, it looks a lot more realistic, right? 
Mm. But I guess my biggest question is around the whole committee and who's choosing. If your conference isn't up to snuff, I guess, does it now not matter? Like, it's Big Ten and SEC and the rest of y'all have to go undefeated or else? Like, I'm not understanding why it changes so significantly in terms of still having these really good ACC teams or these really good Pac-12 teams. Like, if Oregon goes undefeated, they're in the college football playoffs. Not to say they're going to do that this season, you know, the whole revamp, new coach, all that. But – like, are we ignorant to, ignorant to the fact that they are actually a powerhouse or? But that's that becomes the question because a powerhouse by what standards, right? Mm. If if USC, well, not if, when USC and UCLA leave, I don't think that anybody is going to say, oh, my God, those two were the big football names in the conference. And now the conference is terrible at ball because these two specific teams left. Nobody's going to say that. That's not logical. That's not reasonable. Because, again. USC last won the conference in 2017. UCLA last won it in 98. So nobody's like, oh, my God, the conference is super different now. With that being said, the reality is it's not about how much the conference has changed or whatever. It's about the perception and the ideas behind it. Because, again, I don't understand how a group of five teams get left out of the playoffs so often if they're winning every game and their average margin of victory is 20, 30 points. Like, how do you leave that team out? Because you would be hard-pressed to find a power five team that if you gave them that exact same schedule, they would run the table with an average margin of victory of 20-something. Yeah. That's just not realistic. So when I when I look at these, when I look at what I, I believe will become the problem in the future, I said it on my podcast last night, and I'll say it again here. The fact of the matter is the ACC is going to get worse in the same way that a player who does not get better gets left behind by the game. It's Mm -hmm. the, the other conferences are getting either much bigger and stronger, or they're going to fade away very quickly. We all know the big 12 and the PAC 12, those are the two that, that these conferences are looking at and just, yep, I want that team. I want that team. Give me that team. And that's what's happening. Teams are getting sniped off left and right into different conferences. ACC, because of their grant of rights through 2036, we saw what happened with Maryland. Maryland is still recovering, in the words of Deontay Wilder, to this day. They are still struggling to recover to this day. So with that being said, I don't think anybody wants to go against paying off. Right now, you'd have to pay off 14 years worth of grant of rights if you were to leave the ACC. That's not a... That's not a a thing that many of these conferences would be willing to do, especially for teams that, let's be honest, while you're hot now, that ain't always been the case. Or while you're bad now, you might not always be that. And so while you have the money, you still may not want to spend that right away to go elsewhere. So I think this is a situation where the ACC team stay put for now. But like you said, it's not an if. It's a win. The first domino falls in the ACC. Well, see, here's the thing. Like, with the ACC, I'm cool if it was three conferences. I'm cool if we do away with the Big 12, do away with the Pac-12, and just have the SEC, the the ACC, and the Big 10. Like, I'm cool if we want to do that. Mm -hmm. I think, for me, when you look at what the ACC brings, it's not just about football. Like, we dominate in lacrosse. We dominate in swimming. We dominate in tennis. We dominate in um, basketball. Like, to me... You'd be doing yourself, a di- and this is me taking, of course, speaking from an Olympic sports space, me speaking from a former athlete space, like you're taking away a lot by just being like, oh, dismantling. And you're also assuming non-gen- non-revenue generated sports have programs at these other schools that you're joining, right? So Clemson doesn't have a swim team. Let's say, you know, Rutgers wants to have a swim meet. They can't swim. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Title Nine is great. 50-year celebration. Clemson doesn't have a it. swim team? They dismantled it in like 2011. Right. I almost did away with their track team. So like to me, I think there's so many financial ramifications that are beyond football, which I get football is king, cash is king, all that kind of stuff. But there are people that still have to live in this world. Yeah, we dissolved the Pac-12. There are people who work at the (laughs) Pac-12. We don't want to dissolve the Big 12. There are people that work at the Big 12. And to me, I my biggest question is, what the hell happened to the alliance? I thought the Pac-12 and the ACC and the Big Ten were all together. Kevin Warren said, screw y'all. And I'm like, bro, what we got going on? That You're treating this like NFL action. Like, this ain't the Vikings. And yet, this feels very much like we're at a professional level. So, you know, it's getting a little wild. 
And, and you know what's interesting? You know what's first of all, thank you so very much for providing the the perspective of an Olympic sport athlete. Because let's be honest, most of the folks who are going to be talking about this are folks like myself, are yeah. folks like uh, Jay Williams, are folks like you know they're they're folks who played um, who played the sports that bring in all the money. So there there is a, an actually excellent point there uh, to be made for what becomes of the the Olympic sports. And when I say non-revenue generating, let's be clear. That doesn't mean that no money comes in. It just means it's very, very minimal. Because, I mean, you do have to pay for certain meets and all these sorts well, yeah, of things. Well, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and we're, well, maybe we should change that from non-revenue generating to non-profit generating. Because everybody yes. generates some type of revenue, but their expenses yes. outweigh the revenue, which means yes. you're, you're operating at a loss. Yes. So, in the non-profit generating sports, all, yes. all I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. In a perfect world, they get their seat at the table. They get to have a discussion and all that. But my mother we know, used we know there is no such thing. My mother used to play a, a song by B.B. King that I feel like is very pertinent to this moment. <laughs> it is, I pay the cost to be the boss, okay? It, and in the song, he runs down to his woman how as long as he paying the bills, he get to do what he want, how he wants to do it. That is how football and basketball look at the rest of the sports. That is the reality. Then, then spare me on your Title IX celebrations. Spare me on your need to back your your workforce. Spare me on but, all of the things that you're trying to do to better your programs and universities. Please break down for me, line item me. This is my producer brain coming out. Where are you planning to allocate these funds? Because if you're still saying that athletes can't get paid beyond their NILs, where is this money going? But but Miss Cooper, can I can I ask you a question real quick? Here we go. Did we not did we not just talk about this in the last segment of how these folks are they're they're dropping a substance that's not water on people's heads and telling them it's raining? Talking all this talk about this is what's best for the student. No, it's what's best for your bottom line. It's what's best for your bottom line. And again, I'm not even against that. I'm not even against you doing what's best for your bottom line. Just say it with your chest. Just but I'm not. Up to it. I'm not even upset if it's a if it's a state funded school and the money goes back to the state and it goes back to your community and all that kind of stuff. But you know, let's be honest, if that's going to happen, all right? Well, I was just about to say, wait uh, a minute, what? Where do you think? Oh, huh? I'm just saying, let's be honest, if that's going to happen, we all know the truth. But here we are. So BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs. If you bet on whether or not. Now, some of these teams are going to allocate their funds to their communities. You would make a million dollars if you said probably not. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to check on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online is where the game starts. So we can round it out, bring it on home. All this alignment talk is going to get us through the summer, which thank you, content. We always need it. But for the sake of the ACC, if we could talk about who's going to leave and predict that, because we know someone's going to leave, who would be your choice or choices in the next, let's say, one, two years? Maybe even after the 355 model goes away, because I mean, we're over here trying to give you new models. We're getting ready with divisions. We're trying to make you happy. And that still clearly is not enough. So who's going to say, yeah, still not enough? I don't think anybody leaves for the next um, for the next two to three years. But when the dominant, honestly, 2036, with the revenue projections and all that, I don't think anybody leaves until we get closer to the end of that. I'm not saying we get all the way to the end. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think till we get closer to the end, and I think the team to look out for, again, they are in a very similar vein to a Texas, a team that was once powerful, once mighty, falling on some hard times, but they still got a lot of great things going as far as a huge fan base. Florida State. Florida State is a school that, they are, listen, I'm telling you, Florida State is not in a position right now because they're paying two coaches and and they're looking at a situation where if Norvell don't get it together this year, they might have to pay three next year. Um, they're not in a, a great situation there, but they're a team that as we get further and further distance from uh, the Taggart and Norvell situations or if Norvell gets it together and wins a lot of ball games and they decide this is our guy, that's a team that, they have that type of base. And also, geographically, if they were to go to the SEC, the ACC sees you playing all up and down the coast. We stretch all the way up to Syracuse, New York, all the way down to Miami. That's that's how far the ACC stretches. If you're looking at the, the SEC, 
it's not that same type of deal. Even if you talk about how far they stretch out west, I now I could be wrong here, but I don't think that there is. If we're looking at like from a player standpoint of, hey, my family's come to every game and, you know, every game since I've been a kid, they've been at all of them and they want to keep that going. I think you'd have an easier time going uh, to the West via the teams that you've taken from the Big 12 than you would going all the way up from Florida to, to New York. I mean, sure. sure, it's definitely more enticing. There's definitely schools that, you know, probably your papa wanted to see growing up. And, of course, like you finally get to go to the Florida State Texas game. You know, I'm like, yeah, fine, sure. I think overall, like, you make great points about Florida State. If I was going to think about anybody to go ahead and kick the bucket, it definitely would be Clemson. Again, to my point of saying all they care about is football. And that is – cash is definitely – football king down there when it comes to that sport and whether or not they care about the ramifications of anything else. Meh. And they always cry about wanting to be on the biggest stage and wanting to play the, you know, they want more of a challenge. Well, yeah, you know, here you go. Do, do that. Never mind. I'm not even about to go there right now. They're anyway. underdog. They're underdogs. What are you saying? That, Dabo Sweeney says they're underdogs. Exactly. That's my point. If y'all are, you okay, I got you. Hype. I got you. I'm not, I got gonna, you. I, I I'm not even going to up today, but all I'm going to say is this, right? Okay, sure. We could say last year was the aberration and that Clemson is going to be back to running thing. Clemson was not running the ACC for 15 years. Like, that's not a situation where they're like back to back to back to back to back to back, going all the way back to. No, they had a really so, good run. They had okay. a great run. Right, sure. Like six years in a row. That's an incredible run. My thing is, like, why is getting away from getting rid of the divisions not enough for ACC football? It's it's not enough because the other conferences are consolidating power. That's that's why it's not enough. It's, so it's not again, a, what happened to our alliance, Kevin? That, what are we doing? Let Greg, me tell you what something. we doing. Let me tell you something, Jim. Me, what we doing? Can I can I can I talk? Let me let me tell you something. This is probably how it went. <laughs> Kevin saw what was going on with the SEC, and Kevin said, "Hey man, we do we got the money to pull a USC or UCLA?" They Kevin's accountant folks did the numbers. They crunched them. They said, yeah, it'd actually be pretty lucrative for us. And Kevin said, yeah, yeah. All right. We're going to go ahead and pull that move. And his PR people probably told him, but what about the alliance? And he said, well, that's, that's interesting. But what if we break that alliance and you get a $30,000 race? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be all right. And, and but again, granted, again, I can promise you from sources that I know close to my vest, there has been no financial increase for all of these. And of course, it has still has to happen in all the things that come not in. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. It this okay. is not, this is not, this is playing the long game. This ain't just okay. about like, this we'll, re we'll revisit this. Now, now listen, this is what I'm trying to tell you. This is not about right now. If we do this, we will gain more money today. It's not even, and I'm telling you for the schools. I don't know why so many schools who I'm looking at, and I, I don't know every school's balance sheet. I don't know every school's budget, so I'm not going to talk on something I don't know. But I will say this. The conferences, I get why the conferences want these teams. That's obvious. It makes very easy. It's a big, big draw. You got all of California watching you. That's a big draw. That's You know, you got two of the biggest institutions in California. That's a big draw, sure. But the team, the schools? We saw what happened to Maryland. Why do y'all want this for yourselves? But granted, they're leaving under much more amicable terms, like, oh, the TV deals are expiring, mm -hmm. and we're not going to renew. I believe mm -hmm. that's what Ohio, I mean, not Ohio, uh, Oklahoma and Texas did, right? They just mm -hmm. didn't renew, which, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. You leave, and you don't got to pay nobody. All these things or or you stay, or you have a little sense of loyalty, or you just try and build on what grass ain't always green, your big dog. Like, that's my biggest thing on this whole thing. Like, everyone's sitting here telling us, oh, this is going to be so hyped, da, 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 It feels like it's going to fall flat on its face. Like, it's definitely a gamble that is not going to pan out. I don't know. In the words of my man, Johnny Taylor, it's cheaper to keep her. You understand? It's cheaper to stay sometimes. It's cheaper to do what you got to do <laughs> and not go elsewhere. But, but, but some of these teams, you know, I, I've, uh, there's another thing that I learned a long time ago that um, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. He sees the people who went out before him. They see the mistakes. They don't repeat them. A fool must learn for himself. This is one of those situations where, again, if you're a school and you have to pay millions to leave, 
you could say, well, we're not Maryland. People care about our athletics more. Really? Because I remember a point in time where a lot of people were very intently into Maryland basketball, like super Maryland into athletics, it. yeah, like Man. super into it. And and all of a sudden, all of a sudden now, I mean, I'm just and Maryland had the whole Under Armour thing going for them. The, the the creator and founder of Under Armour was a Maryland football uh, alum, right? Absolutely. Kevin I'm Blake. just saying, everybody thought that they had the money, they had the pockets, they had the donors. And look what happened. So again, for the schools, we'll see. We can yeah. we can put a pin in this and see how these schools are looking in three to four years. But for the well, conferences, maybe it's, it's a, easy. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, maybe it's a good thing for the ACC to play it a little bit. Oh, we're not gonna just jump and throw anything out there or try and grab anybody. Maybe these are really backdoor, you know, office conversations that are gonna be happening. We'll just have to see how it unfolds. But. Oh, these conversations, these, these conversations, again, let me tell you something. So all of the listeners, Candace, you already know this. You work in the media, you already know. This. All of the listeners, the the more surprising stories come out or the, the way in which stories come out where nobody knows anything, that means the less people are involved in those conversations. And probably because, the longer that they've been happening. But because, because, well, I'm going to tell you, that's the other part of it. In my experience, and I could be wrong here. But in my experience, the stories that drag on, somebody tells a friend by accident over some whiskey. <laughs> and then when that friend gets a hold of it, you yeah. done told the town gossip. Well, we've, and we've, been having, we've been having predictions for forever. So this is but, not none of this is new. I, I agree. But again, to say that this to say that this UCLA and USC move didn't take people by surprise. Nobody again, saw this. Who knew? Coming. Who yeah. knew? I, I would like to ask who predicted this? Who Kevin, saw this coming? Kevin Warren, be my mentor. Like, all, all I want to know is I want to be a fly in Kevin Warren's wall because there's more to come. That's the thing. But guess there's what? Even if, even if you were his mentee, in moments like this, they do not. Nobody is involved but the higher ups and the numbers folks. And even with the numbers folks, you don't got a bunch of folks crunching the numbers here. You got the, the folks that you trust at the top to keep it quiet. And you're like, I know about this. You know about this. He knows about this. His number guy knows about this. If this leaks out, one of us four did it. And it ain't going to be me or him. It ain't going to be me or him. So we know exactly who it was if this gets loose. And that's how these conversations are being had right now. That's okay. how conference realignment is happening. This is not a boardroom discussion where everybody's in the room and they're like, hey, guys, I just wanted to give y'all a two-season notice to keep it professional. I'm out of here. Yeah, this, I mean, is, I, this is a, this is a golf conversation. If we're being honest, this is on the links. Y'all two are together, taking yeah. it, and maybe your caddy knows. You know, so so much to decipher here. This is going to be a summer long conversation. There's more to come. Of course, we predicted that Clemson and Florida State might be the first two, but could we be shocked and have you next week talking about a whole different two teams? And what does it mean for the teams in the ACC that aren't necessarily the top dogs? Will we just see a dismantle? And where will they the pieces fall for them to land? So, so much to discuss here. Kenton, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Can you please remind folks of where they can find you, follow your work? Well, first of all, let me just say this. I'm surprised that you didn't mention your your alma mater. I don't want to talk about it. I don't I don't I'm, not, I'm, I'm not. I'm surprised because everybody. We can everybody, have a conversation next week, but I'm not having it today. I'm not. Every, everybody can you please tell these folks where they find you. I'm, I'm, all right. I'm going to just say one more thing about it. I'm gonna tell you. Everybody makes the joke about Walmart fans because it's a big national brand and all that. And, you know, anywho, uh, like I said, you know what I mean? I recorded my first two episodes of Locked On Wolfpack um, for the month of July and, and for addressing conference realignment last night. Go check it out. Go check it out. I've gotten some pretty interesting stuff over there. Wherever you're listening to this or watching this, because I'm now on YouTube, you can find me at Locked On Wolfpack. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at LO underscore Wolfpack. And you can find me on Twitter at TGIF underscore Ken. Just be aware you are getting Ken to demand, not the sportscaster there. Wonderful spiel. Guys, come back tomorrow as we talk to AJ Black about more realignment conversations. What does it mean for a team like Boston College and some of these former Atlantic Division folks? It's a lot to discuss. Have a great and safe week for Candace Cooper and Kenton Gibbs. Until next time.